Hello everyone, welcome to my vlog. First of all, I would like to say big thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. Also, I would like to say big thank you to everyone who sent me emails, um, share with, with, with me your opinions, uh, put some comments down, that means world to me uh, because that also allows me to look at my channel and everything what I do from completely different perspective so thank you for that i really appreciate it uh your time and that uh, basically the willingness to share with me uh, your feedback um, about uh, photography industry that's really that's really important and i think that's extremely valuable for me so i have received several emails recently where people are asking me if I wouldn't mind to share a little more information about um, my backgrounds for um, the headshots um, I've been creating. I'll be more than happy to do so and definitely share with you guys where I'm getting my inspiration from, um, how some of those uh, backgrounds uh, came to existence. Um, there's some really interesting stories behind that. Uh, but before I do that, um, I would like to tell you a little more general information about the background. So I'm sure most of you guys know uh, that one of my biggest inspiration is Dylan Patrick. He created the technique um, which allows to create those cinematic um, headshots. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of that, but he had um, some really bad uh, motorbike um, um, accident and um, I hope he will get better very soon. He'll be back with us. Um, keep working in this um, amazing industry. So my heart and then send him some love goes to him um, because um, I think he's an amazing photographer and uh, my business changed um, over the last uh, few years because of him. So um, I have to say that um, this entire background thing even comes um, from um, inspiration from, from him. So let's talk um, into uh, more specific details about my background. So uh, I'm sure if you guys are familiar with, uh, with, with cinematic headshot technique, you probably know that that technique allows you to shoot literally now, anywhere you can shoot inside, you can shoot outside. Um, pretty much, um, even the most, I would say, bad-looking location uh, with a little bit of, in well, with a little bit of, um, I have to say, imagination. You can create something very unique and f something very interesting. And um, I've been living in Calgary, where. Uh, seven months of the year we have winter here, so I can't really shoot outside when it's let's say minus uh, 20 Celsius That's just ridiculous temperature to to even go outside um, And then and, and I have to basically force myself to uh, most of the time to shoot inside and Most of the time I found that this technique allows me to as I said shoot anywhere um, most of my work is corporate stuff so i have to use very tight spaces or places where you know there is literally nothing and then i have to come up with some solution to um this 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 projects to to make them look unique interesting and um, make them pretty much stand out from um, other photographers work and that techniques allows me uh, to do that so if you are not familiar with this um, i'll attach some links to dylan's patrick workshops you guys can check them out they 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 amazing um and and then just kind of take it from there but um again first of all what i want to say um this technique allows you to shoot um any place so what's what's our my favorite background so let's kind of i'm gonna go through um some of them and discuss them why do i like them and um why they're so interesting and why they're so unique so um let's say i'm shooting most of my photo shoots are in the client's locations because I don't um, own studio and most of my clients wants me to come to them. So I have to pretty much show up and come up with the idea um, on the spot. Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's really easy, but there's few specific things which I always look for. So let me start with um, saying that one of my favorite backgrounds which I'm using for my headshots is 
any piece of art uh, mostly paintings um, they have some interesting colors patterns and you always can while well, use them um, as a background um, additionally I always have some uh, additional lights like another speed lights which actually um, adds a little bit more light to make the you know, the background pop a little bit but that's something which is always cool to use as a background and I will show you some samples um, they pretty much you can create stunning stuff um, on the top of that what I found is most of those uh, piece of art people have at home um, they have some meaning to them so they I don't know they they, they brought them from um, some trips they, they 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 this is let's say their favorite artists or um, someone important gave it to them so there's some meaningful thing um, on the top of that so so you not only creating interesting headshot but also you add some additional value because they know uh, the background you are using um, have some value for them or some meaning for them um, so that's that's extremely cool I found a lot of my clients um, they not only like the, the, the headshot, but they also, um, most of the time they're telling me, look, I really like this because there's some kind of hidden, um, some, some kind of hidden information or some hidden aspect of the headshot, which, which has little more meaning to them. So, so that's something which you can kind of look for And And most of people these days, they have some kind of paintings or some kind of art in their homes and, um, just look for them because they 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 always um they can create something very interesting so let's say i'm shooting outside so what what i'm looking what actually inspires me and what i'm actually going after i absolutely love graffiti um the, the sad part is there's not too many graffiti in calgary there is some kind of law in place which um there is either there's a couple companies i think which whenever they spot some interesting graffiti they always clean it up and paint it over and pretty much destroyed um this this art and i absolutely love graffiti because those creates amazing backgrounds for the headshots and if you're living in the places which have a lot of them just go after them and use them and you will see they they're gonna be really interesting and they're gonna give you some very very unique um headshots which nobody can kind of i don't know create it or like um uh, well they give you a really unique look and i found that whenever i drive even around these days i always look for graffiti because if i can spot something interesting then i will just make a note where where i found a place and, and just cross my fingers that they're not gonna um pretty much like uh, paint it over or clean it up because um some of those um, piece of art, um, they're, they, they're extremely cool, extremely unique, and um, that always helps you to, to, to get something very, very interesting. Um, another thing what I love to do is using projector. And if people who didn't kind of hear this idea, I'll attach a link. I've done separate video where I actually show exactly how those uh, backgrounds um come to existence uh, pretty much i'm using white wall and then i'm using projector which um use is, is the, the 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 image which is projected from the projector is used as a background and that also gives you um, unlimited amount of different concept ideas um, you can use different photos um, blur them and create some very interesting uh, backgrounds um, the one disadvantage like you have to shoot in the places where have um, a, I have to say like a white wall and access to the outlet uh, plus you have to have computer you have to just do a little bit of preparation with finding those interesting um, images and pictures and sometimes it's also good to work with the client if, if let's say they have some images or something which means something to them you also can incorporate them into the the session um, I depends on the on the project but um, I would say 25% of my photo shoots 
I use projector, especially uh, for corporate stuff. It's, it's really easy and it's really cool and people always get something very different and unique and then people love that so that's a cool idea um, another thing what I'm using especially for shooting in um, offices like this is something which a lot of people are like how do you shoot let's say you have corporate shoot and what do you where do you shoot and how do you actually approach the problem I absolutely love hallways like believe it or not uh, those are the places where first of all they have a little more room which you can set up your equipment Plus, they give you really interesting lines um, and pretty much you're good to go. Um, and it's, 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 it's a stunning actually concept and I found um, this works really well. So if you don't have a place, uh, try to find any hallway and then you're pretty much good to go. Just look for the light and then you can come up with something very, very interesting. And I have to say that most of my corporate and business stuff that's where i shoot my set it up in any building hallways and um, gives you that kind of long lines and then you can basically also use um, the lights from the hallway as a as a, some kind of like a little touch to uh, the background it's, it's really cool try it I'm, I'm sure you guys not gonna be um, disappointed um, another thing what i would like to say so let's say you go to the location which has really boring walls um, there's nothing going on there's no structure there's no kind of patterns or any anything um, I always carry with me um, gels and I always have some additional speed lights where I can definitely add some colors or actually move the lights around to create some kind of um, different patterns and interesting kind of um, looks to to the background and I've been in some really crappy locations where there was absolutely nothing and because of uh, this additional color um, that always adds something very very interesting so um, and also you don't have to um, buy those expensive ones um, I sometimes use like a plastic foley and use marker to color certain colors and mix them up and that also and I'll try to do another vlog about it to, to, to showcase how I actually create those but um, they not also those gels are not expensive you can get them for about 20 bucks so I'm on uh, like an Amazon where where you know you have um, many many different colors and you can play with them and see what works uh, best so let's say now we're gonna go to some of those play things which let's say there's absolutely nothing and then you have to come up with some interesting ideas you can always shoot through the windows so let's say you go to the locations where there's not much room and there's like one window and there is some trees on the background you can still use that and i'll add some couple um examples of um those kind of um images they they also interesting and then people sometimes have hard time to believe like how the hell you know in this little apartment place uh, you shot through the window and you got this this amazing background so it's just imagination and then you have to know how to approach some of those things but the worst case scenario there's nothing else look for the windows and then try to find something interesting um, background so another things is you can the, the a lot of people shoot in the parks. Um, I'm not really big fan of it, but I started shooting in parks. Uh, sometimes you have to have permits. Um, I really don't like parks for two reasons. First of all, Calgary is kind of windy place, so I always have to carry um, a load of different uh, sandbags and, and protect everything. Um, I, I really don't like that. I prefer to even shoot in some kind of... Um, um, parking places or some back alleys because that protects me parks most of the time they they, they windy but if you have no place to go and then you have no ideas the park always always works perfect because whatever you turn in the park you always can create something um interesting sometimes you have to be careful because of um especially when you set up some lights you you might get some um, bystanders staring at the person and people might don't like that so I rather to shoot in the places where more intimate where people can feel more confident and they don't have to kind of worry that someone is staring at them or someone is just walking by and stuff like that so um, summarizing this whole thing I want to add that 
um, you can shoot anywhere and this is actually I want to add a couple more examples one of the places I shot was the brewery where it was like literally some crazy um, brewery equipment on the background uh, was a stainless steel though so that's kind of cool because it reflects light really nice so we add some additional blue uh, gel to it and we create stunning image um, and another place which I would like to kind of show you, I shot using some uh, steel uh, pillars uh, on one of the buildings in downtown. And also you can create um, interesting backgrounds. So um, the sky is the limit and I would definitely would like to hear your feedback on this and if you guys have any um, ideas or concepts or places where you shot and you got something very interesting those are the mine which I'm most of the time use but um, everything depends on the shoot and depends on um, the client and then pretty much if you if whenever I get to the location that's where my actually juices start flowing and I have to come up with some cool Cool, um, ideas and make the place work so um, I hope that was interesting um, and um, I definitely will be looking forward to hear from you guys um, about this particular topic if you have any questions feel free to contact me so wishing you the best photo shoots and I will chat with you guys very soon